Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually we will prove the structure theorem for finite abelian p groups. So, first recall what we were doing uh, in the last classes. So, let uh, g be a finite abelian group with uh, the order of g is capital N. Suppose if you write capital N as product of these prime numbers let us say p 1 power alpha 1 etcetera p r power alpha r is the prime factorization of capital N. So, then we saw that uh, this g can be written as direct product of this r number of silo p subgroups. So, which corresponds to these distinct primes p 1 etcetera p r. So, g is exactly equal to g of p 1 cross etcetera cross g of p r. So, where g of p is defined to be so those x in g such that order of x divides this uh, p power alpha or order of x is a power of this prime p okay is p power alpha for some alpha greater or equal to 0 okay so this is something uh, we proved without using silo's theorem but if you use silo's theorem then it is clear that this g of p for p divides r of g. So, this is uh, silo p subgroup. So, this is basically silo p subgroup. So, now uh, g is direct product of these silo p subgroups. Of course, all of them are abelian. So, in particularly if you are if you are interested in proving the structure theorem for general finite uh, abelian groups so then we can reduce the problem to finite p groups okay for given prime p so that is what we are going to assume now so we just assume from now on g is just a finite p group okay so let g be a finite p group where p is a prime okay so, that means the order of g is indeed p power alpha for some alpha greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So, p is indeed prime number. So, p is a prime number. So, now uh, what we want to climb? So, we want to climb this is the main theorem. So, the theorem g can be written as direct product of cyclic groups okay of course they are all subgroups of this uh, g so it must have some uh, the cardinality of those cyclic groups will be prime power so p power some e for some e okay so what we want to prove so we want to say that g is isomorphic to so i just write it as equality so this is g modulo some p power e1 ez cross etc cross z modulo p power some e t z where you can choose these exponents such a way that you arrange them in the decreasing order so then this e1 etc e t this form a partition of this alpha okay so this is indeed a partition so that means this e1 is greater than or equal to etc greater than or equal to e t where e t is greater than or equal to 1 and the sum of all these exponents e1 plus etcetera et this is exactly equal to alpha that is the meaning of this is a partition of alpha so this is our claim okay so we also want to prove moreover these exponents or the partition that is uniquely determined by actually this group g okay so moreover this partition e1 etc et of alpha is uniquely determined by g okay so this is what we want to prove okay so before proving this uh, we need some preparatory results so we need to understand uh, how to choose uh, this exponent e1 first then by induction we choose all other exponents okay so for that purpose we already defined what is called the exponent of g okay what is the exponent of g 
let us recall exponent of g is nothing but maximum of all possible order of the elements of g. So, you take maximum of order of x, x in g that is called the exponent of g. Since g is finite, this exists. So, now if you call uh, this exponent, okay, let us call it gamma. So, then what happens? Uh, so, here uh, this group that you have already started with, you can see that if it is isomorphic to z modulo p power e1 z cross etc z modulo p e power t z. So, then you can see that the exponent of the, the right hand direct product must be e1 because e1 is greater than or equal to e t. Okay? So, all other, all, all other exponents. So, because of that this e1 p power e1 will be the highest uh, order for the elements of this direct product. Okay? So, now uh, from this it is immediate that this gamma. Okay? So, if you call uh, order of g equal to p power alpha then this gamma must be at most alpha from using the Lagrange's theorem. So, note that gamma is less than or equal to alpha. Okay, this just uses the Lagrange's theorem using Lagrange's theorem. So, now what we want to do? Uh, we want to prove that any finite p group is uh, actually direct product of uh, these cyclic groups. Okay? But before that let us understand one particular type of finite p group. So, which is indeed cyclic group. Okay? So, what is the property of this cyclic group? So, if you take z modulo p power alpha z. So, this is a finite p group because the order is p power alpha and uh, this is a cyclic group. So, what property this has? You can see that. So, for given any divisor okay, of this p power alpha that means p power i for i less than or equal to alpha we have a subgroup of order p power i. But we also know that there exists unique subgroup of order p power i. So, that is the very special about uh, this group. So, indeed all we need is those this has a unique subgroup of order p. Okay? So, this is some interesting property of this cyclic p group. Okay, now, we will ask this question whether this property indeed characterize this cyclic finite p group. So, indeed that is the case. So, here is the lemma. So, if g is a finite abelian p group and g has a unique subgroup of order p. So, then we claim that g must be cyclic. Okay. So, if you have a <coughs> finite p group that has a unique subgroup of order p then it that must be cyclic. Okay. So, let us uh, prove this statement. Uh, so, what we will do? We will actually use uh, induction on the cardinality of g and uh, prove this statement. So, as before uh, we just uh, assume that uh, the cardinality of g is uh, p power alpha. Okay, and alpha is uh, greater than or equal to 1. If alpha is 0, then there is nothing to prove. So, <coughs> what we will do? We will actually find a nice quotient of this g and then by induction we say that uh, that also satisfies the hypothesis of the result. So, by induction it must be cyclic. Using that information we will actually kind of find cyclic generator of g. Okay, uh, so, we know that uh, this has a unique subgroup of order p. So, call that subgroup h. So, h is a subgroup of g such that the order of h is p. Okay, so, now uh, what we can do? We can define this map pi from uh, g to g. So, which takes let us say x to p x or x power of p. 
okay so let's use the exponent notation no issue so x goes to x power p so then because g is abelian so this must be actually group homomorphism so pi is a group homomorphism as g is abelian so that is not a problem so now look at the kernel the kernel of pi is going to be those g and g such that g power p is identity so what does it mean so kernel of p consisting of either identity or order p elements but we are know that there is only one subgroup of order p so if you take any non identity element from this kernel pi then the subgroup generated by that should have order p okay because g uh, g power p is identity so the order of g where g is non identity must be p so that forces that this kernel pi must be coincide with h there is no other option so the kernel pi must coincide with h as h is the only uh, subgroup of order p so now uh, what we can do we can actually go modulo uh, this uh, kernel so then you can see that this g modulo the kernel phi so this is again a, a finite p group so what is the cardinality of this the cardinality of this is cardinality of g divided by the cardinality of pi which is p power alpha divided by p which is p power alpha minus 1 okay now uh, if this g modulo kernel pi satisfies our hypothesis so then then we are we are done so then we can conclude that by induction g modulo kernel pi is indeed cyclic okay so let us see whether it satisfies uh, the hypothesis so you have a surjective map g2 g modulo the kernel pi okay so which is given by this pi but we have this uh, lattice isomorphism theorem which says the subgroups of g modulo kernel pi has one to one correspondence with subgroups of g that contains the kernel pi okay the subgroups of g containing kernel pi from this set to so we have one to one correspondent to subgroups of g modulo kernel pi okay so now uh, if you have for example two subgroups okay here in this uh, right hand side so g modulo kernel pi uh, that has let's say order p then if you pull back then what will happen so then both of them like let's call here okay let's say h1 tilde h2 tilde there are two groups so both are both are having order p let's say so if you pull back both they come from this h1 h2 so both contains this kernel pi okay uh, but let's understand uh, what is this g modulo kernel pi okay so because the map is indeed uh, from g to g so you can see that so this g modulo kernel pi is indeed isomorphic to the image pi of g okay so the pi of g is isomorphic to g modulo kernel pi but pi of g is indeed a subgroup of g okay because the pi is a map from g to g so that means if you have two groups here in the in the uh, image g modulo kernel pi so then you can see that those two groups are there in pi of g only so which is there in g only so that tells you that uh, you can't have two uh, subgroups of this pi of g that has order p okay because then that would imply that g also has two subgroups of order p okay so we don't need to use this lattice isomorphism theorem so it is immediate that pi of g being a subgroup of g implies that pi of g can have at most one subgroup of order p 
okay so can have at most one subgroup of order p and now p divides pi of g so by cosy's theorem it must have subgroup of order p so in particularly kernel pi is also actually so that h is indeed sitting inside this pi of g okay so even though the kernel h is the kernel but still it is sitting in that uh, image anyway so pi of g satisfies our uh, hypothesis the cardinality of pi of g is same as the cardinality of g modulo kernel pi which is p power alpha minus 1 and it satisfies our hypothesis so it must be generated by some cyclic element okay so pi of g must be generated by let's say y bar okay so y bar is let's call it y power p okay because y bar is just uh, the image so of y so that must be y power p so now uh, if you take this y inside g so what could be the order of y let us try to compute first of all order of y must be some p power gamma because order of y divides p power alpha and this gamma must be less than or equal to alpha now note that uh, since y power p generates pi of g you can see that order of y power p must be p power alpha minus 1 now since y power p is exactly having order p power alpha minus 1 that would imply that y has order p power alpha so let us check this so here is the quick proof if you take y power p power alpha this is nothing but y power p power p power alpha minus 1 so that means it is identity so that means order of y divides p power alpha that is clear so this implies order of y divides p power alpha so now if you take y power p power some okay let us say this gamma so y power p power gamma so gamma is the order p power gamma is the order is identity then that would imply y power p power p power gamma minus 1 that is identity so that would imply that uh, order of y power p is less than or equal to p power gamma minus 1 but this is b power alpha minus 1 so this implies that p power alpha minus 1 less than or equal to p power gamma minus 1 but that would imply immediately alpha minus 1 less than or equal to gamma minus 1 that would imply imply immediately alpha is less than or equal to gamma so that means alpha must be equal to gamma so that means if you pull back the cyclic generator of this uh, uh, this image pi of g so then that must be cyclic generator of g so so we proved that g is generated by this cyclic this cyclic generator y okay this completes the proof of the lemma so basically what this lemma says if g is a finite p group and g has a unique subgroup of order p then g must be cyclic so now let us use this lemma and then prove our uh, result again we are going to use induction on g so what is our result so our theorem so before proving the theorem we will actually prove this uh, supplementary result okay so if g is a finite p group and let us say h is generated by a where order of a is the exponent of g so then there exists k subgroup of g such that g is indeed isomorphic to h cross k okay so once we prove this then by induction we can see that g must be isomorphic to product of cyclic groups so there is no other option okay let us prove this so how one can prove this uh, one again uses uh, induction okay uh, but anyway so now let us uh, start with uh, group g 
let's say the the order of the group is p power alpha and then exponent of g is just say p power some gamma where zero less than or equal to gamma less than okay so because g is let's say non trivial so this gamma must be at least 1 so then this is less than or equal to alpha so now what is the case one case one is if gamma equal to alpha then we are done why because exponent is exactly the order so that means there is an element of that uh, exponent of g which is the order of g so then in this case g must be cyclic so the g must be cyclic so then we can assume that gamma is indeed smaller than alpha okay so then we know that this h that we have chosen is indeed proper subgroup of g okay because this is having exponent exactly order of a is exponent of g so the h cannot meet the order of g so now you can see that g is not cyclic okay g is not cyclic so from our previous lemma okay from the previous lemma we get another group call it l subgroup of g such that order of l is p and l intersection h will be trivial so why such subgroup exist so this h is already a, a cyclic subgroup of g so since order of this h is order of a which is exponent of g which is p power gamma gamma is greater than or equal to 1 so this must contain a subgroup of order p okay so this h already contains a subgroup of order p okay so now uh, since g is not cyclic it must contain another subgroup of order p okay so we can very well choose because that another subgroup cannot be inside h because this is contains a subgroup of order p and a unique subgroup of unique subgroup of order p so that means we can choose l from g and that also has order p and l as l intersection h is trivial okay so now one can look at this question map from g to g modulo l because all the subgroups are normal one can talk about g modulo l no problem so you have this uh, surjective group homomorphism so this is group surjective group homomorphism okay so now you have this g mod l <coughs> what is the cardinality of g mod l the cardinality of g mod l will be cardinality of g divided by cardinality of l which is p power alpha minus 1 so this is again a p group okay so now you can assume that uh, so this uh, this is indeed product of cyclic groups okay but what we are looking at we are looking at some subgroup of g okay which is k which is isomorphic to uh, this uh, okay not exactly so this is again the complement of this h so that is what we are looking at okay so we can use induction and then uh, we need to cook up something here using the data so let's let's see like uh, what we are going to do so we have to understand first of all uh, so the in what is the induction so the induction about getting the complement subgroup for this h okay so what is h h is cyclic subgroup generated by a cyclic generator which has order exactly exponent of g so if you are able to produce an element which has order exponent of g and then take the subgroup generated by that element then for that subgroup you have complement that is your induction hypothesis okay so let us try to do that here so since this pi is a surjective group homomorphism it is easy to see that the exponent of g is at least exponent of g modulo l 
because exponent is nothing but maximum order of x, x in g. So, you can easily see that uh, for that particular exponent of g. So, you can see that y bar of exponent of g will be trivial for all y bar in g model. So, that actually implies this. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check this is very easy thing to check. Okay. So, now you have this exponent of g which is at least the exponent of g mod l. So, now look at what will be the uh, corresponding uh, group subgroup of g mod l that corresponds to h. Okay. So, you have this surjective map pi from g to g mod l and then the l is chosen such a way that l intersection h is trivial. Okay. Now, you have h here. So, let us look at the image of h inside g mod l. So, it is clear that the pi of h is indeed isomorphic to h plus l modulo l. Okay. So, this will be your uh, pi of h it is not isomorphic this is equal pi of h is h plus l mod l. So, if you use one of the isomorphism theorems then it says that this is isomorphic to h modulo h intersection l. So, that is exactly equal to h modulo the trivial. So, that means this is isomorphic to h. So, pi of h is indeed isomorphic to h that is because l intersection h is trivial. Okay. So, using the isomorphism theorems you can conclude this. So, now uh, what is the order of h? Order of h is exactly exponent of g and exponent of g is greater than or equal to exponent of g mod l. Now, note that h is cyclic. Okay. So, h is cyclic. So, that implies pi of h is also cyclic. So, that means by going modulo this l where l intersection h is trivial. So, we are preserving the exponent. So, the exponent of g is same as exponent of g modulo l and this pi of h is indeed a cyclic group corresponding to exponent of g modulo l. Okay. So, that means, so let us say this is generated by some y bar. Okay. So, for this pi of h we have the complement subgroup in g modulo l. So, by induction we can get some k bar inside g mod l such that the g mod l is exactly equal to this pi of h direct sum or the product k bar. Okay. But this k bar should come from some k. So, let us take the k to be pi inverse of k bar because pi is a map from g to g modulo l. So, you just take this k to be pi inverse of k bar. So, now look at what is happening there. So, you have g, you have this g mod l, you know that this is nothing but pi of h cross k bar, but this is naturally isomorphic to h cross k bar. But the thing is this k bar is just k modulo l. Okay. So, this is in the indeed k bar is k modulo l. So, somehow you have to find a complement here in, in G for H. Okay. So, that should resemble this k bar. So, that is why you take k which is pi inverse of this k bar. So, now we claim that for this k we have G equal to H cross k. Okay. So, now let us look at what is happening. So, G is going to be definitely H Okay, let us use the additive notation h plus k plus l okay, l yeah. as g mod l is equal to h mod 
H plus L model okay H plus L mod L plus K mod. So, since G mod L is H plus L mod L plus K mod L. So, you can easily see that G is exactly equal to H plus K plus L. So, now L is subgroup of K. So, that imply that G is exactly H plus K. I am just using additive notation for the group operation for the group operation okay we are in the abelian group there is no harm. So, now we have that uh, G is indeed H plus K, but if you want to say that G is direct product of H and K you need to prove that H intersection K must be trivial okay. Let us look at what is the H intersection K. So, let us take X inside H intersection K. So, then it is clear that this X bar Okay, which is pi of x is going to be inside your pi of h intersection pi of k. But what it is? So, this is pi of h intersection pi of k is k bar, but k bar is the complement. So, this is going to be trivial. So, this is E bar. So, that means if you take x, x has to be inside what is e bar? The inverse image of e bar is pi inverse of e bar. So, that is going to be L. Okay. So, that means x is inside h intersection L because h is x is already in h and k. So, now h is in L that imply x is in h intersection L. But what is h intersection L? If you go back to your uh, choice of L, so, L is chosen such a way that H intersection L is trivial. So, that means this X must be trivial. So, that tells you that H intersection K is trivial and G is H plus K. So, that implies that G is isomorphic to H cross K or H direct sum K. Okay. So, this proves that by induction for this uh, cyclic subgroup which has the ex cardinality exponent of g you have the complement. So, now by induction you can see that okay, if g is isomorphic to some x okay, direct sum k where r of x is exponent of g. So, now use induction on the use induction on the cardinality of the group. Okay, so, then you can see that this k will be isomorphic to some g modulo p power e 2 e z direct sum etcetera direct sum g modulo p power e t e z. Okay. So, now if you put them together you can see that the cardinal this uh, order of x is p power e 1 which is the exponent. So, you can see that this is uh, going to be p power e 1. So, g is isomorphic to e z modulo p power e 1 e z cross etcetera cross e z modulo p power e t z. So, I am mixing up notation may be direct sum and direct product are same in the abelian case no issue. Okay. So, this proves g is direct product of this uh, abelian uh, sorry cyclic groups which has prime power order p power some e1 etc et okay so this completes the proof for the finite p groups so now uh, uniqueness is also somewhat clear okay so so if you start with uh, general group g we already seen that g can be written as some gp1 cross etc gp t Okay. So, let us say cardinality of G is n where n is written as p 1 power alpha 1 etcetera p t power alpha t. Then the each of this G p is given to be those x in G such that the order of x is p power alpha for all some alpha greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, from this you can see that this g of p is uniquely determined by the choice of that prime p. Okay. So, the collection g of p 1 
etc g of p k so being they are silo p subgroups since g is abelian so they are all normal so they are unique silo p subgroups so because of that they are uniquely determined by g so they are uniquely determined by g so now if you focus only on the particular g of p so then we know that this g of p is written as z modulo p power e1 z cross etc cross z modulo p power et z so now what we can do we want to claim that this partition e1 etc et of let us say this uh, alpha where cardinality of g p is p power alpha. So, this is uniquely determined by g of p. So, how one can get this? So, you can simply look at this p times g p. What is this p times g p? This is just uh, this x power p x in g. So, this is that uh, subgroup the image of x goes to x power p. So, then I will leave, leave it to you to check it is easy exercise that if g, g of p is isomorphic to this z modulo p power e 1 z etc z modulo p e t z. So, then this p g of p will be naturally isomorphic to z modulo p power e 1 minus e z cross etc cross e z p power e t minus 1 e z. Okay. So, then in case if you have two different partition that corresponds to the same group. So, then what will happen let us call them e 1 etc e t. So, this is the first two partition of alpha and the second partition is call it f 1 etc f t dash. So, for this correspondence let us say g of p is isomorphic to the first one p 1 z cross etc p e t z. Similarly, g of p let us say isomorphic to z modulo p f 1 z cross etc z modulo p power f t dash z. So, then from this you can see that uh, from this observation you can see that p g p okay so that must be isomorphic to both okay so in particularly z modulo p e1 power minus 1 z cross etc cross z modulo p e t minus 1 z must be isomorphic to z modulo p power f1 minus 1 z cross etc cross z modulo p power f t dash minus 1 z. So, these two things should be isomorphic just by comparing these two and saying that p g p is uniquely determined by g p. So, this immediately implies if you look at this e 1 minus 1 etcetera e t minus 1. So, this tuple should be exactly equal to the tuple f 1 minus 1 etcetera f t dash minus 1. But it can so happen that some e i's could be equal to 1. So, only except those things, so these things are equal. Let us say some uh, r number of terms here is 0 and s number of terms here is 0, r terms, s terms are 0. So, that means what you have e 1 minus 1, etcetera, e r minus 1 minus 1. Okay, let us call it R, R here and uh, S here. So, we will go up to R here. Okay. Up to this, this is non-zero, then after that it is all 0. So, that means you have T minus R terms here and then here T minus S terms. So, this is equal to F1 minus 1, etcetera, Fs minus 1. So, all other terms are 0. So, that means those Fis f s plus 1 etcetera they are all 1 okay they, they get cancelled. So, the here it is t minus s. So, this tuple is equal. So, then from this you can see that at least for up to this uh, r and s. So, first uh, these things are non-zero all of them are non-zero and this is also non-zero. So, that tells you that 
these terms okay so this e1 minus 1 should be equal to f1 minus 1 and so on and then er minus 1 should be exactly so this r must be equal to s and er minus 1 should be equal to f r minus 1 so this says at least for this r terms e1 equal to f1 and so on er equal to f r but note that all these terms are greater than or equal to 2 whenever they are greater than or equal to 2 by going down to this quotient we we get that uh, corresponding tuples are equal no issue okay but if you think about it so we need we also need to say that this t minus r is same as this t dash minus r okay so because here it is t dash so we have to say that t dash minus s and t minus r both of them should be same so how do we say that for that we can actually compare the order of the group okay so what is the order of the group the order of the group is exactly p power alpha which is obtained by just adding all the exponents e1 plus etc et and then p power f1 plus etc ft dash now first r term they are all equal that means this can be written as as like this p power e1 plus etc plus er and then p power the remaining term that is t minus r which is exactly equal to p power f1 plus etc plus f r and then p power t dash minus r okay so now we know that e1 is same as f1 and then er equal to f r so this term that appears on the both side they must be same that means those things can be cancelled then that would imply that p power t minus r must be same as p power t dash minus r so that would imply that t minus r is same as t dash minus r that would imply that t equal to t dash so once t equal to t dash then the number of ones that appear here or the number of zeros that appear here must be same as number of zeros appearing there okay so that means the tuple that we have here okay not only t equal to t dash this also proves this partition e1 etc et must be same as this f1 etc ft okay so this proves that so when you restrict your attention to this p group g of p which is the silo p group so then the partition of that uh, you get from that decomposition of g of p into cyclic uh, subgroups so that is uniquely determined by g of p and g of p's are uniquely determined by g because they are determined by in indeed the order of the group okay that p is that that are involved so this proves that uh, the factorization that you get for g as a product of cyclic p cyclic uh, prime power order groups so that must be unique up to a permutation okay so let me just uh, write the theorem and then i will stop so what is the theorem so if you put together everything if g is finite abelian then g can be written as ej modulo some p1 power e1 ej cross etc cross ej modulo some pt et ej where this e1 etc sorry p1 e1 etc pt et so this is a multi multi tuple so the repetitions are in included so this is uniquely determined by g itself okay so not only it is isomorphic moreover so these tuples that involved in this decomposition they are uniquely determined by this g so this pi's can repeat okay that is also there so this p1 etc pt they are primes so not necessarily distinct so this is also part of the result so this proof 
for any finite abelian group we have this very nice cyclic decomposition okay and uh, these numbers prime powers okay p1 e1 etc pt et that is uniquely determined by g and this decomposition actually uh, called elementary devices decomposition so these numbers that are involved so this p1 e1 etc pt et they are called elementary devices okay this completes the proof of the structure theorem of uh, finite abelian group so which is actually indeed uh, very important theorem in the first course of uh, group theory so with this actually uh, so we are indeed uh, completing the course okay so uh, i hope uh, you must have enjoyed this course and then learned uh, some amount of uh, group theory from this course okay i hope to meet you uh, soon in uh, some other occasion okay thank you i will stop there.